If something didn't work for the system, we improve it, we fix it right here, right now. Because what it allows you to do is to use the past knowledge in the past system so that you can put that into and use it in the present. You've got a repeated process somewhere in your business. I, generally speaking, you choose the right people, you have the right conversations along the way, you're just fine. Maui Mastermind presents the Business Coach Podcast, answering your questions and providing real, actionable insights for building a better, stronger, more profitable business without sacrificing your time, life, or freedom anymore. Well, welcome to another episode of The Business Coach. I'm your host, David Fink, and I want to welcome you to this week's episode. We're going to talk about something very new this week, the idea of systems, business systems, as an as a inventory inside your business, a valuable reservoir inside your business of processes and procedures. And, and it's a radically new way of looking at systems. And I want to start off by, by starting with a problem. I think you've probably dealt with this problem in your business. Um, you've got a repeated process somewhere in your business, either in the operations or production part of the business, or in the sales part of your business, or in the, the marketing or business development side of it, or maybe it's in the financial side. And this repeated process gets done, uh, whether it's done weekly or monthly or quarterly or even once a year. And what happens is it feels like every time this process is coming up again, it's almost as if your staff is having to reinvent the wheel. I don't know if you've ever felt this way, I'm sure you must, where you're like frustrated because, you know, guys, we did this last month or we did this last quarter or we did this last year. Why is it so hard to do it again? It feels like you're giving them the same set of instructions or you're having to catch the same set of mistakes another time, another time, another time. And so in this podcast episode of The Business Coach, I want to go through how can you avoid that by by seeing systems in a radically new perspective. This is something that inside the Maui companies we've been doing now for about the last three years. It's the ideas of looking at your systems as if they're inventory. Now think about that term of inventory for a moment. If you can imagine you've got certain shelves in your storage house and on these shelves sit your packages of your products and materials and raw supplies that you have with this part. Imagine that your systems were like this inventory that you have on the shelves. And when you're done using a system, you prepare it for the next use and put it back on the shelf. And so I'll give a couple of examples. So first of all, I want you to think of something that you want, that you do regularly in your business, a, a process that you've UBS. Remember that term that we've used before uh, in the Maui community with business owners that we coach on this podcast and many of the books that I've written. The term UBS came roughly 30 years ago. Business partner and I were building then a training company that we had, and we were building it so that one day we could sell. We said, how do we build the ultimate business system for how to do our company? The ultimate business system, the UBS. And over time, the UBS, did, it started off as, a, as the, the theme of how do we systematize our business such that we could later on two years from now, seven years from now, sell the company and have it be worth a lot more money. Again, this is 30 years ago, but over time, as our staff started using this concept, we realized that UBS is both a noun and a verb, right? It's a, it's a noun. Hey, did you add that to our UBS, to the cloud-based place where we put and store our systems? Or in some businesses that are more blue collar, it might be to a particular three ring binder or to a uh, a poster on a wall that has a certain process labeled out. But generally, your UBS is, the, is a cloud-based system wherein you're storing your systems. It's the system for how you store, access, refine, add to, and when need be, cull or delete systems in your company. The systems that aren't inside of some enterprise software. UBS is also a verb. Hey, can you please UBS that process? You know, hey, the way that you handled new patient check-in was fantastic. Could you UBS that so the two other clinics are doing your way, which is a better version of what they're currently doing? So it's a noun and a verb. So think about something that you've UBSed. Uh, maybe it's how to onboard a new client. Maybe it's um, how a project manager should start and manage a particular project again and again. Maybe it's how you promote a particular event. Maybe it's 
um, how your financial person does um, the payroll process. And it happens every single two-week pay period. So think of that. Jot down a note of what that is. This episode will mean a lot more to you if you've got something in mind. So what's a, a process in your company that you do regularly, whether it's weekly, monthly, quarterly, annually, or every two years biannually, and you want to make sure that it doesn't feel like you have to reinvent the wheel every time. So let me ask this question. When's the best time to prepare that system for use for the next time? And I'll give the example. I'm going to use a case study inside the Maui Mastermind business, right? So one of the things we do with our business coaching clients is every quarter we host another advanced workshop on a curriculum that rotates roughly every three, three and a half years. So for example, um, one of the workshops might be on hiring. And we've got a workshop that's called the Hiring Super Course. You know, how to find, hire, onboard, and retain top talent. And it's an event that we host roughly every three years. And for every event, we need a system for how we promote that event. Now, 85, 90% of the participants in any of our live events are actual business coaching clients and their key staff members. But still, we need to make sure that they know what's going on and promote to them so that we'll have you know, 100 or 150 clients in that room. If we don't promote and don't do that well, we might only have 65 to 85. Long term, we know that we give more value to our clients when they attend the events that touch on the hot buttons that for them are the pain points of what they're dealing with in their business at that moment. So we want to get them there. In addition to that, we also promote to our general uh, e-list of people, and we'll typically have anywhere from 10 to 15% of participants in an event be those from the general public who are just paying cash for the event or paying credit card for the event. Whereas coaching clients, the coaching fees cover for them to participate in those quarterly events um, for them and team members. So our system for how we promote these advanced workshops on a quarter-by-quarter -quarter basis, if you were to go backwards in time five years ago, one of the frustrations I felt for the business was every quarter it felt like, why are we reinventing the wheel? Or every two or three years when we repeated an event, why do we have to recreate the sales copy for the event to promote it? Why do we need the promotional emails to be redone? Why do we need the landing page to be created from scratch? Don't we have this from last time? The problem was, was that we had these things, but our UBS had become so full that it was harder to find. Plus, the UBS was for the prior event, not for this event that was going to happen in two years or three years or four years down the road. And so what we did is we made the decision that we're going to treat our systems for repeated things as if they're inventory. And we're going to reshelf that inventory of that system ready to go for the next use right at the moment that we finish this time. We take in the things that we've learned and we put them back in there. So for example, in promoting a system, we would have things like the event description, the landing page HTML copy to, to make the page go live again, uh, promotional messaging for clients and for non-clients who are going to come and pay full price for the event, um, video promotions that we have. We have talking points for our coaching staff to be able to explain to clients about who this event is right for on their teams, if anybody. We have um, a master timeline of when we should have the promotion things go out. You know, we know that six months before these things need to happen, and three months before these things need to happen, and two months before these things need to happen, and one month before, and two weeks out, and one week out. We have a timeline for those things. And the key is the time to re-prepare that timeline and all those elements for the next use is immediately after this use for it. It's the equivalent of you know, putting back your tools exactly where they go so the next time you just pull them off and they're ready to go. And so you think about it with the analogy of a tool, let's say that one of your tools was a nail gun. Well, what's a load? Well, I don't know if you load it. I'm not the handiest person. I don't know if you actually load a nail gun, but at least let's make sure there are nails for the nail gun right next to it on the shelf. I don't know if you actually want to load it. I, I just have these visions of, of someone accidentally shooting their own foot or something like that. But we want to get it ready for the next use right now. Now, after we're done going through the sequence of it, we've used the system, we should pause and ask what worked well and what one or two things can we improve to make the next use of this system even better. And then we make sure that those improvements, we don't just write them down for what the improvements will be, 
so that one month, one quarter, one year later, then we create the improvement. No, we take the extra 5% of energy to do the improvement right here at the end of doing it while it's fresh in our brain so that for the next use, that improvement is already done for that next time through. I can't tell you the number of times, if I were to go backwards in time, since we've been doing workshops now for 20 plus years, if I were to go back a decade ago, we would have certain events that we would do once per year or once every two years at that point. And I would see the same typo show up in each of these documents. I would point it out to my staff. They would write down that they're going to correct that for the next usage. But they would wait to actually make the quote unquote correction until they were going to use it the next time. Finally, I got fed up and said, look, no, now is the time to make the correction. So correct it here in all past one so that no matter which version we pull off, we, all of them are correct, right? We restock the shelves with that system so we can pull it off and use it the right way. Now, we call this reshelving um, the system. We get the system ready to be reused the next time through, right here, right now. If something didn't work for the system, we improve it, we fix it, right here, right now. The benefits of doing this discipline, I want to be clear on what they are for you. Number one, it will never be fresher for you than it is right now. Your staff is very fluent in the system because they've just gone through, whether that took them one hour, one day, one week, one month, they've just done the system. If they wait three months or even three weeks or even three days to then make the improvements, they'll have to refresh themselves and, and, and so they're going to forget some stuff. Number two, because it's fresh in your mind, it's much more efficient to do it now. You have all the materials, all the documents, all the spreadsheets, all the PDFs, all the video. You have all that right there at hand. Now is the time to do that fix and making sure that when I store it on the shelf, so to speak, that as I store it on the shelf, all the pieces are in that one place. It's really clean and easy for the next time. I just pull the package, the kit, for how to do monthly uh, uh, payment of vendors, accounts payable, or I pulled the system for how we um, do an onboard for a new front desk person for one of our clinics. I pull it off the shelf and it's all ready to go. Sometimes there might be physical elements to that system. For example, there might be materials that have to be physically printed. Well, in some cases, depending how frequently you do this, you might even have a small inventory of those physically printed folders. For example, let's say it's one of these systems here in blue is a, a new hire system. So that when you have an onboard of a new hire, you might have employment packages ready to go. Now you might have to adjust some of the things there, but the generic portions, the folder, the, the, uh, the name badge, all that is ready to go. The third thing this does is it improves your results. Because what it allows you to do is to use the past knowledge and, and the past system so that you can put that into and use it in the present. And then you can put it and reshelve it for future use. If you don't do this, your staff will constantly be reinventing, reinventing the wheel. And in so doing, they're, they're going to screw stuff up. That if you just take the benefit of having done this a dozen or more times to make sure that you're always using the most, most updated version, reshelve the system. Now, I've been guilty of not doing this. I, we had a, a person, a vendor that we had brought on as an independent contractor. I'm thinking this one was probably about a year and a half ago. And uh, actually closer to two years now as I think about it. And I used the wrong contract. I used an earlier version of our IC, our independent contractor agreement. I had it locally on my computer, but rather than using the cloud-based version that was in our UBS, just like I would ask all of our team members to do, I used the wrong version. And as a result, there was a clause in there that was wrong. It was incorrect. That we had fixed subsequent to that. Well, because we had the clause wrong and the vendor in our company had a bit of a dispute, we ended up having to figure out a fair settlement. It cost us over 10 grand. That's just a simple instance of us. In this case, it wasn't my staff. It was me. Me not reshelving the system for the next use and leaving an old out of date one on my desktop of my computer, it cost 10 grand. I have better uses for that. There are a lot better ways. We could have used that in our marketing budget. We could have used that with our, our coaching ways to delight clients. We could have used that in some other fashion. But I screwed it up because I didn't reshelve the system. I said, oh, I know this clause is wrong, but I'll make sure that the next time I use it, I'll make the correction then. 
and of course, that was idiotic of me. I was, I was really very, very dumb to do it that way. Why? Because in the seven or eight months in between the two times I had done that, I had forgotten to make the correction, and so I used something that was outdated. It's really important that the time to update a system is at the point at which you're done using that system to reshelve it for the next time. Okay. The fourth thing this lets you do, and this is really important, is it lets you, when you, re, when you think about your systems as inventory, it lets you compound the improvements that you're making. Version 1.0, version 2.0, version 3.0, each subsequent iteration, you've learned a little bit more, but that learning isn't just in someone's head, it's actually made its way and transferred into the system itself that's been reshelved on there, which means that 5% improvement that next 3% improvement, that next 9% improvement, you get to compound all those various gains. And compounding those various gains means that over time, ultimately, you're going to have a much greater impact and result from all your business systems. And um, you know, you're, you've already paid these lessons. You know, we paid for those lessons. If I were to go backwards in time, I can't tell you how many times that I paid for a lesson it didn't get back into the system because I thought I would do it later. I forgot to do that or a staff member forgot to do it. And because of that, we ended up paying for the same lesson, making the same mistake a second, a third, a fourth time. It's a really important thing. So think about your systems as inventory. It's a radically different way of looking at those systems that get used on a regular basis. Start with Start with the, the one or two larger systems that get redone every month, every quarter. Those things that you're doing each week, chances are you're fairly fresh with them and your staff is too. So start with those things that happen a little bit less frequently each month, each quarter, or certainly each year with that part. I think that's a place to go. I hope you like the idea. It's made a big difference inside the Maui company and we've introduced this with the clients that we coach inside the Maui Business Coaching Program. Um, I got a question from a reader, and to remind you, I want to encourage you, if you have any questions that you want to send in to the business coach, I'd be happy to, uh, first of all, I'll read through every one, as will Kurt, um, our team member who's in charge of the podcast, and we'll pick those that make the most sense to share on air and to give you my best coaching, and, and I'll treat it as if you're a coaching client of our company, what would be the business advice I would give to you, the counsel I would give to you? And... To do that, you just send it into the business coach at MauiMastermind.com. Just email to the business coach at MauiMastermind.com. I will read every email. The business coach at MauiMastermind.com. So the email I want to talk about came from Mark. And he was sharing in his business a struggle that he has, which is he's the only one in his company that can actually take care of the bookkeeping and the payroll that he does every two weeks in a pay period. And as he went through there, just a little background, when he started coaching with us, Mark was at a service business, at about maybe three, $350,000 a year in revenue. And now he's right at the, the million dollar mark, a little bit past the million dollar a year mark in terms of revenue. The business has more than tripled. He's done a great job with that. Um, but he has something in there in this case that only he can do. Now, his email said about how can he better leverage his administrative assistant to take on this, this, and this so that he would have time to do the things that only he could do, including the bookkeeping and the, the payroll. My coaching back to him was not what he originally thought it would be. He thought it was going to be input about how can he better leverage his administrative assistant to free up his time to do more of the bookkeeping and, and the payroll side and not get rushed for that. My advice was slightly different, actually quite different. I said, why in the world are you the only one that's doing that? First of all, a good bookkeeper uh, might cost you anywhere from $30 to $50 per hour on the low end to $100, $120 per hour on the high end, depending which part of the country you are. And now, in today's world, most of that can be put to less expensive areas of the country or less expensive areas of the world. Um, you don't need someone on site to do bookkeeping anymore. For a, a controller for a larger company, you have a five, $20 million company, you want a, a controller on site, that's a different matter. That's probably a hundred, hundred and thirty thousand dollar a year higher on in some markets to maybe as, as low as eighty-five to ninety thousand in certain areas of the country, plus benefits, etc. But for you to have that person that you're contracting with an outside company, you know, probably like I said, in the low end, 30-ish 
an hour to a high end of no more than 120. But here's a guy that if he spent the five to 20 hours per month that he was doing on that role um, back in the other places in his business, like hiring of his key people to do and produce more work, he's flooded with work. He, he, his big limiting factor is actually the production capacity to do the work in his service business. And that's worth probably a 10x in terms of the hourly rate that he would earn doing that other work. So my comment for him was to hire a good quality bookkeeper. Now, when you're looking for a quality bookkeeper, generally you're looking for someone with 10 or more years of experience in the field. Um, and you know, his concerns were also about payroll. How does he make sure that the payroll is, you know, that's access to money if he has someone else do that? And I talked with him that most banking systems, certainly most payroll companies, you can use a payroll company itself, is going to have a two pay a two-party system wherein one party can start the transaction, but they can't actually give the final approver, approval. A second unrelated party is the final approver from that. For example, if you're doing it through your own bank's um, system or through one of the other services, you know, QuickBooks has their, their own payroll system that's hooked with that, as do many other services, ADP, et cetera. By doing that, you can still have good financial controls and at the same time not have to have it be you. The, the toughest part of having somebody do that role is they're going to know what other people are earning because they're the one that's going to be seeing either setting up or doing the final approval of that payroll component. And that's a tougher one. The nice thing about a third-party system is they don't have relationships back into your company in a way that they're going to get upset when Janet finds out that Carol earns $10,000 more per year. It takes a very mature, emotionally mature person to not have that be the case. Now, I think you can have an honest conversation. Hey, Janet, you're going to be involved in this payroll process. In doing so, different people might earn different amounts. Number one, you must keep this confidential. And I need to be able to trust that you're going to be able to do that. Can I count on you for that? Good. Number two, you know what? Some people are going to earn different amounts based on the value that they bring to the company, different roles that they have, what it took to hire them, et cetera. And number, I, I don't want to hear any grumbling from you about that part. I need your maturity to know that you're going to see that part. And I'm trusting for you to have that maturity. Is that in alignment from what I can expect from you? Right? I'm going to have to have an honest adult conversation with whoever's doing that part. Yes, there can be some downside to it. Now, generally speaking, you choose the right people. You have the right conversations along the way. You're just fine. But certainly a third-party payroll system probably makes sense and a third-party bookkeeper. So that came in from Mark. Mark, I hope that gave you some good insight from advice or coaching that I would recommend for you. So thank you for watching another episode or listening to another episode of The Business Coach. Um, again, I hope that you got a lot from today. Think about business systems as inventory and how do we reshelf that inventory of systems for the next use right here at the end of this use of it. A simple tweak like that. It's a, it's a slight different viewpoint, but it's a radical different way of doing it is going to deal with that frustration that so many business leaders have of why does it feel like we're reinventing the wheel over and over again. I wish you the very best. Thank you.